what did y'all's EJO E business? Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, thank you for coming. I hope you enjoy my reaction. So what we are getting into right now uh, on this title of this video, I could have easily said something to make it just clickbait, but I didn't want to. When I say that clickbait, I could have said this whole title. All right, because it says white South Africans. That's how it starts. So I could have just said something that white South Africans, you know, I didn't want to do that. All right. So I'm just, you guys probably don't even care the hell I just said that. All right, we're about to get to this anyway. All right, but the title of this is called White South Africans Inspired by Trump and U.S. Alt-Right. All right, the alt-right groups, racist, that's what it is. The groups, they're racist groups. All right, that's straight up what it is. All right, the racist groups. So... What we're doing right now is we're watching American media. This is CNN. Originally, I've been doing Fox News because, you know, Fox News, they just be talking out their ass and all that, you know, so and it's too funny, you know, so that's why I show that. All right. So we're watching some right now. CNN. OK, CNN. All right. Let me say, do this because I said it before. Fox News. That's the Republican side, conservative side. For example, that's Donald Trump's side. OK. Now, the Democrats, liberals, that's what it is. They are CNN, all right? So, that's the left side, all right? So, for you guys, since you guys are watching me, the left right here, that's Democrats, all right? The right right here, that's the conservative, Republicans, that's Trump's side, okay? So, um, that's, what, that's what I want to say right there. Anyways, let's check this out, okay? I'm very curious about it. White South Africans what inspired by man inspired by trump and alt-right groups let's see what the hell they're about to be talking about all right let's go y'all the unite the right rally in charlottesville virginia even in its bloody aftermath a young woman killed by a neo-nazi president trump refused to pick sides what about the alt-left that came charging at did you see that car, how um, it was going in reverse? That car ended up going down like a street and it hit people. And like it ended up killing one person. So yes, a little crazy ass guy. And this was in Charlottesville. All right. Let's go back to this though. All right. The, as you say, the alt-right. Do they have any semblance of guilt? Facing mounting criticism, the president would eventually condemn hate groups but not before his initial comments were echoed by white supremacists globally. How these people, these right-wingers in the USA, restrain themselves in the face of such antagonism, I really don't know. That's an audio message from a South African sent from Charlottesville back home to his followers. Really? This photo places Simon Roche at the scene. Surrounded by Nazi flags, he's in the corner wearing a hard hat. But what was he doing there in the first place? The Simon Roche character, what is he up to in the US? American white supremacists, they support Roche because they have a long fixation on South Africa as a possible model. That's the voice of the Anti-Defamation League's Carla Hill. She didn't want to show her face because she actively tracks hate groups. She also monitored Roche's six-month trip through the U.S. One way or the other, the time is now for you, white men, to arise. During his time touring the United States, he was welcomed by a cross-section of American white supremacists. And he took to the alt-right media for support. Help us to continue to fight the good fight. A constant theme. We represent the white people of South Africa who are presently being told that they can expect to see a genocide. It's a favorite refrain of- Is that true about the genocide? Um, what he said about, I guess, how they look at it? The far right, an impending white genocide in South Africa. Absolute power all of the time. Proven by what they claim is an epidemic of politically motivated farm murders. A false narrative that flows unabated online in videos, in chat rooms, on far-right websites, and increasingly 
in the mainstream. There it was, a tweet from left field. I've asked Secretary of State Pompeo to closely study the South Africa land and farm seizures and expropriations and the large-scale killing of farmers. Also making his visit to the U.S. was another South African to the left of National Security Advisor John Bolton. Ernst Roetz's organization, AfriForum, fashions itself as a minority civil rights group, the minority being whites. Listen closely to his message on Fox News, a segment that aired before President Trump's tweet on the issue. Intentional campaign to crush. <clears throat> How big? Oh my gosh. Tell me about the killings out there with farmers because. All right, I'm gonna tell you guys something. How we don't learn shit out here about South Africa. All right. You know, seeing stuff like this, South Africa's brutal farm murders. Well, guess what? That gives people a bad vibe of thinking how South Africa is. You know, because people don't know anything about it. All right. South Africa's brutal farm murders. That's what this is saying. Tell me about this. Like, they just, they make it seem like it's a big problem over there. Like, they just, like, they really make it seem like it's a huge problem over there. Like, with just, like, black people just killing white farmers. Like, it's kind of weird, you guys. Like, trust me, this is, I, like, on some real shit, all right? I'm going to keep it real with you guys, like I always do. No matter what, if I was watching Fox News and I've seen this title, I'll think it's bullshit. But tell me, the the farmers' situations, is it on the news out there a lot? Because we it's not obviously on the news out here in America. They don't talk about South Africa a lot. But for the things I have watched, it talked about land and the farmers and all that. Is that like something huge that's going on out there? Like, I'm really curious. Is that something like real big that's going on out there? Because obviously, whenever you see stuff like this out here, the people that tend to watch Fox News or anything, imagine how they look at South Africa. They look at South Africa like that's how it is. It's just nothing but brutal. All right. I need you guys to know that. Like, you guys, trust me, you guys have to know that because there's certain things that are shown on the news and that are seen right here. It gives people a bad vibe of South Africa, all right? So I want you guys to tell me this, all right? Is this such a big thing out there, all right? And let me know how you guys feel about that, about what I just said, you know, because that's the truth because... With Americans see stuff like this, it kind of makes you kind of like, oh shit, like how South Africa, it must be bad. Oh yeah. You know, especially like I understand some white people over here, they see that and they get intimidated about going out there because they probably think they're going to be taken advantage of and oh, they're going to be killed and all that. How do you guys feel about all that? Everything I just said, all right. What, I, what I'm basically coming down to say is how do you guys feel about the things? How do you guys, if you guys notice, how do you guys feel about how they just talk about like white farmlands? All right, being taken advantage with some of the things I've shown on here that I've gone over with Fox News. All right, let me know. All right, we're about to go back to continue and watching this. Um, yeah, let's go, all right? A racial minority within your country, and the government seems on board with it. Is that an overstatement? Well, what what the book is about is is it's about government complicity in the scourge of farm attacks and farm murders that we've seen in South Africa. Now, listen to the facts. Relative to murders in South Africa, there isn't some epidemic of farm murders. So it's around 64 murders on farms compared to over 20,000 murders taking place nationally. Universally, they find that the motivation is robbery. 
it's not really, you know, at the end of the day about any kinds of facts or data. It's about a myth that's been created. But of course, you have to sell that narrative. You want to be the victim, right? You don't want to be the aggressor. You get no sympathy. Heidi Byrick directs the intelligence unit of the Southern Poverty Law Center, monitoring scores of hate groups. Once Trump put out that tweet, attention was drawn to this theory of white um, South African farmers under attack and being genocided in a way that had never happened before. And it's already translating into more than just rhetoric. As we found out when we joined Roche and his group, the Saitlanders, on a remote farm in South Africa. The group is actively monitored by South African security services, in part, says an intelligence source, because it displays the same tendencies as terrorist organizations in recruitment of new members as they prepare for an all-out race war. What does it feel like for you to have your family here hiding in the bushes if this was a real-world situation? Well, it, it would be very disturbing, but uh, if you prepared for it, it's not that bad. And make sure that we are ready for when the anarchy really breaks up. It's a drill, of course. Here, ketchup replaces real blood. All right, paramedic. But make no mistake, the Saitlanders are deadly serious about their founder's doomsday prophecy. We are preparing for a storm like the canary in the coal mine of the same anxieties and distresses that are being experienced in Western Europe and in the USA. There is a pervasive sense amongst certain sectors of historically white societies that those societies are being diluted on other people's terms. But see, when you use a term like diluted, I mm. think Nazism, I think eugenics, I think all of these horrible things from the past. No, Why David. is being diluted a problem? That's neurotic. The societies are, in demographic terms, being diluted. It's certainly concerning because the young are needed to make a movement grow. And that is exactly what's happening. It's a dangerous mix and a warning of what can happen when extremes dominate a debate and reason gives way to fear. David McKenzie, CNN, near Welcome, South Africa. Your turn. Go ahead, talk. Tell me everything, how you guys feel about that. All right. Tell me everything how you guys feel.